We will try to develop equilibrium and strain equations in cylindrical coordinate systems. So imagine we have got a body which can be defined by a cylindrical coordinate system. In the cylindrical coordinate system, we have three variables. One is the radius. Another one is the rotation with respect to any fixed axis. And the third one is the Z axis, which is the linear axis. Based on R, theta and Z, we can define any structure which is in the form of circular ring or a disk or a curved bar. In uh, discussing stresses in uh, these type of structures, it is advantageous to use cylindrical coordinate systems. Imagine we have a fixed coordinate system OX1 and OX2, O being the origin, and we extract an element named as 1, 2, 3, 4 from this cylindrical body. This element is located at an angle theta from the fixed axis OX1 and having a central angle d theta. We will now consider equilibrium of this small element 1, 2, 3, 4, which is cut out from our cylindrical body by radial section 0, 4, 0, 2 that are normal to the cylinder and by two cylindrical surfaces 1 and 3. So 2 and 4 are the radial sections and 3 and 4 are the cylindrical surfaces. The normal stress component in the radial direction is denoted by sigma r. On the other hand, the normal component in the circumferential direction is denoted by sigma theta. The shear stress component along the radial and the circumferential surfaces is denoted by sigma r theta and sigma theta r respectively. Again, the first subscript of the stre uh, stress component denotes the outward, the, uh, outward drawn normal of the surface, and the second subscript denotes the direction of the stress. Point P is the midpoint of the small element 1, 2, 3, 4. Point P is the point where we will determine or we will derive the equilibrium equation. It is important to remind ourselves that in the case of equilibrium equation, we have to consider the variation of stresses along the opposite sides. So in other words, the, the stresses are varying as we move from section 3 to section 1. Similarly, the stresses vary as we move from section 4 to section 2. In 3D, along the height Z, we have stresses varying as we move from phase 5 to phase 6. The element 1, 2, 3, 4 is a part of a circular sector or a disk sector. The radius at section 3 is considered R, and we assume that the radius changes to R plus dr as we move from section 3 to section 1. The central angle of this sector is d theta. This figure shows the tangents drawn corresponding to section 3, 1 and surface 2, 4. Sigma theta is normal to section 2 and section 4, whereas sigma r is normal to section 1 and section 3. As we said that the central angle of the sector is d theta. We will try to sum up all the forces in the radial direction now. So starting from surface 3 and 1, we can say that at 1, we have sigma r times the area of the face 1, which is r plus dr into d theta times dz. dz is the portion of this sector in the vertical direction. Please remember that in the case of equilibrium, 
we have to convert all these stresses into forces. Therefore, all the stresses will be multiplied with the corresponding area of the surfaces on which they are acting. The force at surface 1 will be subtracted from the force at su surface 3. So, surface 3 is sigma r into the area r d theta into dz. The second contributor in the force in radial direction is the circumferential stress sigma theta. There would be a component of sigma theta in the sigma r direction. So, if we consider this diagram, draw a horizontal line at the point where section 2 and 4 meet. So, that horizontal line will be making an angle d theta by 2 with the extended 0 to section meeting at the point. We can say that this horizontal line halving the sector. So, if this angle is d theta by 2, we want to find out the angle of this circumferential stress in the horizontal direction. Based on trigonometry, surface 2 is making an angle d theta by 2 with this horizontal. And since, since this circumferential stress is perpendicular to the section 2, thus the circumferential stress is making 90 minus d theta by 2 with this horizontal. The normal force on side 2, therefore, has a component along the radius through point P of minus sigma theta into dr sine d theta by 2 into dz. That has been written over here. So we have got sigma theta. Its component in the sigma r direction is sine d theta by 2. And since d theta by 2 is very small, we can change it to d theta by 2. Now, this stress is multiplied by the area of this section, which is dr times dz, and that is done over here. Since we have another force also, which is on section 4 in the same direction, therefore, for section 4, we have got another force written. These both are negative. The shearing force on side 2 and 4 will also contribute to the forces in radial direction. Please note that these forces will have the same direction as sigma r since this is part of the same sector. So, in other words, we don't need to take a component of the stress in the direction sigma r. Sigma r if extended, meets at point O. And similarly, sigma theta r and sigma theta r on section 2 and 4 also meet at point O. Thus, the sh shear stress sigma theta r at side 2 is positive. Sigma theta r times dr dz. And we subtract sigma theta r on section 4. Similarly, we have a contribution of the shear stress on the face 6 and 5. So, sigma zr time the area of this portion of the sector. This portion can be treated as a small rectangle having one side equal to r d theta and the other side equal to dr. So, we subtract the side 6 from side 5. Finally, we will include the body force, which we define as R per unit volume in the radial direction. So, R times the volume of this body, which is R d theta dr dz. All these forces have to sum up to zero in order to satisfy the equilibrium of forces in the R direction. This whole equation can be divided by r d theta dr dz and we can take a limit to get the final equilibrium equation in the radial direction. Please note that the first term which is 
summation of all the forces in the radial direction or which is contributed by sigma r will give us two terms of the equilibrium equation first term would be sigma r r d theta dz at surface 1 minus sigma r r d theta dz and divided by r d theta dr dz and limit and taking the limit would give us partial sigma r by partial r in addition they would be sigma r dr d theta dz which will be divided by r d theta dr dz that would give us sigma r by r the second term when added will give us sigma theta dr dz d theta because d theta by 2 is in the both terms of the circumferential stress this term when divided by r d theta dr dz will give us sigma theta by r and in negative direction hence sigma r minus sigma theta by r is written as a single term in the equilibrium equation the third term will give us will give us partial sigma theta r by partial theta 1 by r we will have 1 by r in this second term because there is no r appearing in this term so when we divide this this third term by r d theta dr dz we would have r remaining which is shown over here the second last term is partial sigma z r by partial z in this term we have got r d theta dr appearing so once divided by r d theta dr dz we would have only dz remaining and that dz in limit will be converted into partial derivative the final term which is the body force will come in terms of r i.e per unit volume in the radial direction we can do the same exercise and find out the equilibrium of forces in the tangential or circumferential direction so for the second case we have sigma thetas which are appearing on section 4 and section 2 of the element so sigma theta times dr dz at section 2 minus sigma theta dr dz at section 4 this is enclosed in the curly brackets in order to treat this as one term later this term these curly brackets would be converted into partial derivatives once we take the limit the second contributor is the shear stress sigma r theta so we have sigma r theta on surface 1 and sigma r theta on surface 3 so sigma r theta at surface 1 will be multiplied with r plus dr times d theta into dz so r plus dr d theta is the is the length of the r at position 1 and that is multiplied with dz in order to give us the area at position 3 we have sigma r theta into r d theta dz the third contributor is sigma theta r which is appearing at position 4 and position 2 so corresponding to point p we will have to take the component of sigma theta r's in the direction sigma theta these components these will be sine components and both of them will be in the direction of sigma theta appearing at section 2 that is the reason that we have sigma theta r times dr dz multiplied with d theta by 2 and both have plus signs again the sine d theta by 2 is taken approximately equal to d theta by 2 in the case of dr we did the same exercise but at that time sigma theta was appearing in the opposite direction to sigma r in the case of some of all the forces in tangential directions 
we have sigma theta r's components in the direction of sigma theta appearing at section 2. These components are taken at point P of the element. After this, again, we have sigma z theta, which is multiplied by the area of the portion of the face at position 5 and 6. So in the vertical direction, we have the shears, sigma z thetas also contributing to our tangential forces. Finally, we have a body force S per unit volume, and again, it's multiplied with the volume of the element. Now we can divide this whole equation again by R d theta d R d z in and take limit. So the first component will become 1 by R partial sigma theta by partial theta. Please note that R will appear in the first term because we have no R appearing in this term. So when we divide R d theta d R d z, R will appear in the first term. The second term again has got sigma r theta r plus d r into d theta d z. So second term will contribute two terms in this in the equation of forces in the tangential direction, similar to the first term in sum of forces in the radial direction equation. So we would have sigma r theta into r d theta d z, which will be subtracted from sigma r theta r d theta d z at position 3. And once divided by r d theta d r d z and taken limit, we would get partial sigma r theta by partial r. We would have another term, which is sigma r theta into d r d theta d z. So again, when we do the same exercise, we would get sigma r theta by r since the dr d theta dz appearing would be cancelled by the dr d theta dz with which we have divided. The third term will have sigma theta r by r appearing, and the fourth term will be converted into partial sigma theta z by partial z, similar to what we did previously in the case of sum of forces in the radial direction. The final term will come as s per unit volume. The third and final equation of equilibrium would be sum of all the forces in the z direction must be equal to zero. So at position one and three, we would have sigma r z's, which will be subtracted from one another. So sigma r z into r plus dr into d theta times dz at position 1 minus sigma rz into r d theta dz at position 3 so that's the that's corresponding to the radial direction then we would have the shear stress corresponding to tangential direction at the face whose outward drawn normal is in the circumferential direction so sigma theta z into dr dz at position 2 minus sigma theta z dr dz at position 4 the third one is sigma zz, which will be in the vertical direction at position 6, minus force in position 5. Final term would be body force T per unit volume, and that is multiplied with the volume of the element. So again, we, if we divide this equation by r d theta dr dz, we would get partial sigma rz by partial r plus partial sigma rz by plus partial sigma theta z by r partial theta plus partial sigma z by partial z plus t equal to zero. So these are the three equations of equilibrium in the cylindrical coordinate system.